Welcome to Tarella Report Radio, a podcast-style program where we discuss big ideas to see if they can contribute to more individual liberty and equal opportunity. Unlike many popular channels out there, this show is a dedicated non-echo chamber. I hope you subscribe if you are interested. It's been two days since one of the most unfair debates in American political history. Basically, the mainstream media started out with a particular narrative, and through the way the debates were moderated, they were able to confirm that narrative and make it official news for otherwise clueless people to consume. On the first night, it was clear that they wanted to declare Elizabeth Warren the winner, and they got to do just that, after giving her a lot of air time and giving Tulsi Gabbard very little. Still, Tulsi managed to be the people's choice after all, as I discussed a few days ago. They further marginalized the candidates they want to hide on the second night. Andrew Yang was given like three minutes to speak, and viewers simply didn't get the chance to listen to his message properly. As a result, Yang didn't seem to get a boost from the debate, while the media all declared Kamala Harris the winner. Some mainstream media commentators even had the gall to tell Andrew Yang to drop out. But then, it's not over yet. Given that it's only June 2019, there's still a long way to go. This is the decisive moment of the battle. Remember in 2016 when the media tried to silence Bernie Sanders? A similar thing also happened with Donald Trump on the Republican side at least for a while. These examples show us that the mainstream media doesn't always win. Right now, Kamala Harris is the new Hillary and Andrew Yang along with a few other candidates are the new Bernies. It is still up to the new Bernies of 2020, including Andrew Yang and the Yang Gang, to continue building momentum. And we also have to remember that Andrew Yang is more popular, much more popular than most people know. The polls may say that he only has around 1%, but I don't know how they are conducted. I have long suspected there could be something wrong in them, and recent poll failures in both America and other countries like Britain and Australia further compound that suspicion. I mean, we are talking about the same pollsters who told us Hillary would win comfortably in 2016. The fact is, whenever I talk about 2020 candidates, Andrew Yang always gets the largest amount of interest. In fact, the rest of the popularity rankings don't line up with my experiences either. From my experience, Andrew Yang is definitely in first place, with Tulsi Gabbard in second, and Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg tied for third. There also seems to be some interest in Joe Biden, but he would be in fifth place or so. Other than these people, I have seen relatively little interest for anyone else, including many of those who are hyped up by the mainstream media. Seriously, I have come across very few people who like Kamala Harris. I know this is only my own experience, and it may not be the whole picture, but it must count for something, right? I think this is why the mainstream media is running scared from Andrew Yang and has not given him his fair chance to speak. I think that as long as Andrew Yang keeps up the good work and the mainstream media cannot hide his popularity for too long. While the recent debate wasn't the turning point many of us were looking for, it will come soon. That's all for today. I'll be back next time to discuss another big idea. Subscribe if you want to follow our story. The transcripts are available on my website and my Medium profile. And remember to resist the hive mind and stay individualistic. The world depends on it.